I'm Dan Forth Prince from Blood Moon Productions. Um, we released a biography of Frank Sinatra, the boudoir singer, all the gossip unfit to print. It made a lot of news. It was an unvarnished treatment of Frank's uh, relationships with other A-list celebrities and many of the unpublicized stories of one of our favorite entertainers. Um, this made news, our book made news, in places where Frank was particularly loved. Uh, Hoboken, New Jersey, uh, Los Angeles, um, Las Vegas, and Palm Springs, California. Uh, Frank had a house there, of course, and spent many um, key moments of his marriages and his relationship with JFK there. I was invited to talk on a radio station, K News Desert Radio, on the Bill Feingold show, Bulldog Bill, and here follows the, uh, the soundtrack of that particular interview. Thank you for your interest. From the desert to the world, you're listening to an encore presentation of K News Radio, the desert's news talk superstation. This program is intended for a mature audience. As long as you're over 12. Audience discretion is advised. Hey, if you don't like it, go to Russia. What kind of radio show is this? Woo! And now, ladies and gentlemen, he's a transplant from New York. Nothing good has ever come out of New York City. But now, for no apparent reason, he's spreading his sunshine all over the desert cities. Trust me, you'll be ignored like the busboy at Hooters. It's Bulldog Bill Feingold Unleashed. On K News Radio. Whenever you're near, I hear a symphony. A tender melody. 8:35 Thursday night, the Bill Feingold Show. I'm the Bulldog. He's Kevin Holmes, producing and co-hosting. Also producing and co-hosting. I need two producers, two co-hosts. Is you're getting Nick big, the intern. Bill. Oh, oh, should only happen. <laughs> Speaking of getting big. <laughs> We have Dan Forth Prince on the line. He's laughing already. <laughs> I know. Dan Forth Prince. Dan Forth Prince, who runs a fabulous company called Blood Moon Productions. And tonight we're going to discuss a very controversial book, Frank Sinatra, the boudoir singer. Frank himself describes his nickname like this, quote, every time I sing a song, I'm actually making love on stage. Call me the boudoir singer. Welcome back to the show, Dan Forth. Oh, hello, Bill. It's awfully nice to be back. Thank you for having me. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to you, Dan. Ford. Merry Christmas. Yes, it's it's it's, uh, it's very nice to talk to Palm Springs. Yes, and it, it, it's a little chilly in Palm Springs, but this... well, you ought to see it in New York. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's the win it's the winter solstice. You know, I mean, we all should light bonfires and chant. And, and you're on Staten <laughs> Island, right? If I remember. Yes, oh. where you used to live. I remember. I never lived on Staten Island. Are you crazy? <laughs> Are you crazy? You can keep the Statue of Liberty in the the ferry over there, but no. Okay. Uh, Frank Sinatra, it's it's hot, it's unauthorized and unapologetic. Frank Sinatra, the boudoir singer, and it's written by Darwin Porter and Dan Forth Print. Now, Darwin, tell people about Darwin Porter, his background. Yes, how very nice of you. Thank you. Yes, um, I am something of a caretaker for this book. I'm, I'm president of the company that published it, Blood Moon Productions. Right. And I've been working creatively with Darwin for about 30 years on mainly lots of literary projects, including many, many of the Fromer travel guides. Mm -hmm. um, but Darwin is, is, is many talented, and he was a, um, what's the word, a um, entertainment columnist with the Miami Herald for right. a long time when um, Miami was rivaling Las Vegas, and Darwin moved in showbiz circles, and mm -hmm. Darwin would talk to people behind the scenes. He would talk to showgirls, and he would talk to gamblers, and he would interview, I think he interviewed Meyer Lansky once, the great mafia Really? Don. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. And so he, he r retains from those years um, of, of being an entertainment columnist, uh, which was really his heyday. This was mostly in the 50s and, and, and the 60s and the 70s. Everyone had a story about Frank Sinatra, um, and Owen recorded many of them like a, like a, what do they call that, a tabula rasa, like a sponge, like an right. intellectual just soaking it all up. He is blessed with a photographic memory, and he would return and make notes afterwards. Um, and then I'm digressing here, but one of his earlier books was a biography of Anais Nin, the diarist, and I know Neen would evidently have lunch with, with, with Henry Miller and then rush back and record in her diaries everything that Henry Miller ever said. And then 
<laughs> so in other words, Darwin Porter is somebody if you had lunch with, you had to watch what you'd say or it was going to wind up in a book. Well, it was very disingenuous at the time. I don't think anyone quite realized that Darwin was always the youngest person at, at any gathering. Darwin was the younger companion of a very grand patriarch of the American arts called Stanley Haggard. Okay. And Stanley Haggard was in on the early days of Hollywood. He was something called a Powers model. That was a oh, sure. modeling agency yeah. back then. He was with May Murray in the in the Merry Widow. Um, he was lived next door to Adela Rogers. St. John's, and Stanley was, uh, God, a lot older than Darwin at the time, and um, Darwin was advertised as Stanley's companion as being, quote, the youngest person who ever lived, and Darwin was like 17, running around having dinner with Margaret Mead, and Darwin would say, who is Margaret Mead, and they would say, you idiot, she's the most important sociologist who ever lived, and Darwin would rush to the library and read up on Margaret Mead and then meet her for dinner that night. Mm. So Darwin, if you want to relate it to Samuel Johnson and Boswell, you certainly can. Okay, that's good. But Darwin was writing as a muse, as a bright, plucky journalist. He was bureau chief of the Miami Herald in, in Key West. Which, by the way, was the listening post for Havana, and well, sure, um, when but Batista's government crashed or collapsed, it was the, Key West that became the listening post. Key for, West is the closest place to uh, Cuba, though. No, yeah, no. 90 miles away, and Darwin used to take the ferry boat every other weekend from Key West to raunchy, bordello-laden Havana yes. to... I think he rented an apartment long term, and he, you, you don't go with an inquiring mind to Havana back in the 50s without coming back with vivid colors, vivid images, vivid memories, always associated with the movers and shakers of the time. And by the way, one of the most interesting chapters in that Sinatra book was called, I think it was Mob, Frank Does the Mobster Mambo in Havana. That's and right. Darwin was really very involved with Havana and the crash of Batista and really interviewed government figures, artistic figures, very much in Key West when he was recording that. Well, let's, uh, let's talk and I th- about I Frank. I think a lot of that stuff, um, a lot of Frank Sinatra's life was just on the cusp of many, many social movements. Um, one of them certainly was the sexual revolution. Um, he, others, had, in this book, he was also just on the cusp of the tabloid revolution. If, if, if Frank Sinatra had been alive and kicking today, every, everything he did would be covered in, in abundant detail in 50 different variations on the tabloids. Uh, but, but he, like JFK, moved with a certain impunity, never believing that, anyone, that any newspaper would ever actually examine very carefully of uh, his actions, his movements, and so we really have done a latter-day tabloid treatment of the life of the great star whose name was Frank Sinatra. Okay. Now, now let... my motivation in doing this is um, rather pure, actually. Wait, there's nothing I pure in, in this no book. no means do yeah. I, in my role as publisher and, and, and the, the, the man who helped make this book happen, I never, ever had the intention of, of, of dethroning Frank Sinatra from the perch that he deservedly occupies as a major artist, as a major, major talent um, in any way. Um, well, I happen to live in Staten Island, as, as we indeed heard. Right. Yes. <laughs> and Staten Island is just across the river from um, the Jersey Shore, the Hoboken and Bayonne, and um, Frank, of course, was from Hoboken. Right. And, you're, and and we're right across the bridge from Brooklyn here. And I, let's talk about being Italian, and let's talk about Frank's links with the mob, if well, we for, might. Well, let's uh, let, 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 excuse me, excuse yeah, me. I'm so sorry, Will, no, me. that's okay. No, you're you, you're just one to dance for the Prince. I mean, we can go on forever. It's called Frank Sinatra, the Boudoir Singer. Um, I have a question about the book, and then we'll talk about Frank's life. How, oh, uh, thank you. Yes, I babble on. No, I, well, that's no, rather it's, uncontrollable, it's, that's I'm excellent. afraid. excellent. I mean, he made a lot of women very happy. Very well, happy, I mean, it's although... it's very nice to look at a lusty heterosexual, you know, and, and, yes. and really making women... Now, now you got to be careful. you got to be careful. And, and I think what's marvelous about that series called Mad Men, uh, right. what was that, was that H... Um, AMC, wasn't it? Yeah, really? Mad AMC. Men. It's still AMC on, did yeah. a series on Mad Men, and it brought home to a new generation of viewers a, a life in America that was pre-feminism. Um, but, of course, feminism righted many horrible wrongs in the way that women were treated, blah, blah, blah. 
and aren't we grateful for the great feminists of our age, Gloria Steinem, etc.? Um, but Frank really operated in a pre-feminist era, and and it is chronologically that was not all that long ago. If you consider that yeah. the Rat Pack was at its peak in late fifties, I think if I'm saying that right. But the whole point of view is that like women were broads and men were there to you know to to call yes. the shots, and Frank really did it his way. And I think that many, many of the conflicts that that are are that, that great talent called Frank Sinatra, but many of the problems he faced in his two marriages with Ava Gardner and with then Mia Farrow was that he he came crashing into a differing kind of um, mentality about what women's roles would be within the entertainment business and within a marriage. And so I think Frank Frank's macho bluntness was came crashing. Um, head to head with with and Mia Farrow, who was a born again flower child, who who, who I think his his sense of of macho superiority or domination or whatever you like, simply fell on deaf ears when it came to Mia Farrow. Um, right, now, now Dan Forth, Dan Forth, yeah. Dan Forth. Here's my impression. Now of you Frank call me Sinatra. Dan, by the Dan Forth. Okay, is so Dan. Formal. I think my a... mother wanted you gave me a formal name. She wanted me to marry a millionaire. She gave me a snobby name so that okay. I could, but I fooled her. You fool, <laughs> uh, you did. But we're talking about Frank Sinatra, the boudoir singer. Uh, he sleeps with a zillion women in this book, and I don't. Yes, yes, I, yes, now, uh, we, yes. Quiet, it's, it's quiet, quiet, quiet. I want to bring something up. Okay, Dan Forth. Dan, are you with me now? You're yes, I am. Yes. He sleeps a lot. They're not sleeping with him because of his good looks or personality. So we'll let the audience guess what Frank Sinatra, why these women. I mean, you quote Ava Gabor saying, after a night with Frank, I ended up in the hospital. <laughs> now, here's my question. You quote a lot of people. How do you make these quotes? Where I mean, you know, I was a history major. I, I couldn't quote Benjamin Franklin unless I heard him say it. Oh, I, that, that was reported to other parties who then wrote it in their memoirs or something. Okay. Um, the, I think that uh, fueled by alcohol at drunken dinner parties in the Hollywood Hills, an awful lot of people say an awful lot of indiscreet things. And entertainers tend to be somewhat promiscuous anyway, insecure creatures that that we are. Right. <laughs> okay, but me... I, I think that all of this was evolving into a marvelous uh, potpourri fermentation of, of, of drunken dinner party gossip that someone took clever notes for at a, at a, at a dinner party or recorded in some biography of his or her own. Or... Well, we have to take a quick break. When we come back, let's talk. I was just telling... Uh, Kevin and Nick the intern. That last night, Robert. Hello, Nick the intern. How you doing? Yeah, Nick the intern. He he's crazy. He's so happy that you're on the show. Uh, last night, Robert Blake was on with Travis Smiley. Oh, okay. interesting. Yeah. And Robert, on your show, really? No, 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 show. no, no. With Travis Smiley on PBS. And Robert Blake is crazy. Robert Blake yes. is out of his mind. And he said he got very annoyed at Travis Smiley. And all of a sudden, he said to Travis Smiley, "Let me tell you something." When my mother was pregnant, if she knew Dolly Sinatra, I wouldn't be here. How's that? <laughs> and that was on television. But let's go. When we come back, we'll talk about Frank and his career. Because, I mean, Frank Sinatra had a great, great career, but he betted, like, I think, anything that moved. Well, at, yes, of course, we'll come back, and I'll, I'll be brief. But okay. he also spanned far greater movements than the music industry. He really dabbled in politics. Yes. He really is like a litmus test of the tidal waves of change sweeping over what we call the American century. So in many ways, he really does define the American experience in an amazing way. Well, we're going to come back with our friend Dan Forth Prince, now known as Dan Prince, and talk about Frank Sinatra, the boudoir singer. It's another outrageous title and blood moon. Babylon series. You're listening to the Bill Feingold Show, 94.3 K News FM. 8.52, the Bill Feingold Show. I'm the Bulldog. He's Kevin Holmes. He's Nick the Intern. And we have our friend Dan Forth Prince, now known as Dan Prince. And the name of the book is Frank Sinatra, the Boudoir Singer. Dan Forth, hello. You there? Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes, Bill. Hi. Yes. Welcome and back. Hi. It's, it's a fabulous book. A fabulous. He had a great career. Frank Sinatra obviously had a great a great voice. I mean, the, the teeny boppers loved him. And his career spanned, what, 60 years or something? Uh, yeah, I think so, yes. Something like that. And uh, 
He was a politician in his own way with the Kennedys, and then they dissed him, and he got annoyed. But what, do you have any favorite stories from the book that are sort of, you know, G-rated? Well, we can make them G-rated. <laughs> I, I I think I have zillions of stories for the book. Um, I, I, I think I like the easy fluidity that he showed in his political, what, what, his, his, his climbing, his political climbing, his ability to make himself indispensable to whatever politician needed the votes of his fans at the time. His feuds with the Kennedys was almost like epic and then his right. allegiance with the republicans was a mixture of hurt feelings and opportunity that was i think really should be in all the history books um that's such a vague answer do i have favorite stories god so well, many tell, um, talk about you know kevin's favorite person in the whole world was marilyn monroe talk about because you never really hear about frank sinatra and marilyn monroe got very close well well that was a well, one that comes to mind was 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 Frank's um, competitive friendship with Joe DiMaggio, who was right. married to Marilyn Monroe, um, and the wrong door raid. I think it's an incredible story. Is that Joe DiMaggio one day became terribly jealous that Marilyn was sleeping with her piano teacher, a male piano teacher, um, right. and actually she was stripping the piano teacher, right. and they were in uh, an address that had a confusing series of entrances. And the, how did, what happened there? Let me see. Um, DiMaggio enlisted Frank Sinatra to barge into um, Marilyn's bedroom or the music teacher's bedroom and take pictures and use it as part of a divorce ceremony or to kill the piano teacher or to beat up Marilyn. And Joe DiMaggio got very possessive. And Frank, for some reason, got pulled into this, which, which one questions his judgment at the time. But, God, maybe there was a lot of alcohol involved or a lot of... There always was there. Yeah. There always was. There always was. And I, and he, I, I think that he didn't sleep very much either. I think he was an entertainer who survived on like four hours of sleep a night. <laughs> well, the Rat, Pack, the Rat Pack, they stayed up all night. I mean, they all just All night, partied. all the time. So they stayed up all night very, very angry. They, they broke into the wrong apartment, and so they bashed down a door. And Joe DiMaggio, with, I think, a photographer and Frank standing guard, bashed in on a woman. I think her name was Florence. She right. was absolutely terrified, and she found herself photographed. Her hair was in curlers, and there was makeup all over her face. They snapped pictures of Flores looking horrible. <laughs> and then it had all kinds of consequences. Marilyn was not caught in flagrante. Um, uh, it made Confidential Magazine, um, I don't know, six months later. It led to Frank's then being busted, investigated by... It wasn't the FBI. It was a branch, a special FBI of the state of California, who who broke in on him in his villa one, late one night in Palm Springs, snapping pictures, and it, it it ended up in court. And Frank paid quite a lot of money, and it strained tremendously the relationship or the friendship between Joe DiMaggio and Frank Sinatra. Well, yeah. It was called the Wrong Door Raid. And if you see the picture, which of course we printed a it's picture of book. that yes. particular building in the in the book, yeah. it it does have three entrances and a very confusing numeration system, and it was just a, a drunken brawl of a stupid, badly conceived plot that went bad in the night and embarrassed Frank, and, 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 in, and in a later age, I think it would have <laughs> probably got him jail time or something. Dan Prince, really... how do people get this book, Frank Sinatra, The Boudoir Singer? Oh, it's how on they Amazon. It? It's, it's on in Amazon. Barnes & Noble. It's, right. We're very lucky to have good distribution. We're, we're a small press. Right. Um, we, we, uh, we are a very small press, but we've got good distribution, and if you just Amazon, Amazon has it all over the okay. place. Okay, it's called Frank Sinatra, the Boudoir. Say, who? What's the next book about? Who's it about? Is it about Kevin? Well, the next one. Thank you very much for asking. We're doing a book on on J. Edgar Hoover. We Oy. are paralleling the release of the um, Clint Eastwood movie, the, right. the copy of Clint Eastwood movie, and doing a book on on J. Edgar Hoover and Clyde Tolson. And the subtitle is Investigating uh, the Sexual Secrets of America's Most Famous Men and Women. <laughs> and the career of J. Edgar Hoover has never really been told in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way that is not afraid of the sexual content of the discoveries that was being made and concealed by the FBI through J. Edgar. Now, I haven't, Everyone, seen, I haven't seen the movie, but I hear that Clint Eastwood really stays away from it. I mean— No, I think he, he treated it very delicately. 
I may go out on a limb here. I'm always very interested in the shared and common agreements that happen within editorial boards, if you like, or creative teams, if you like, or even in editorial circles. People will say, well, we've got to address the homosexuality of J. Edgar Hoover. How are we going to do it? And then parties A, B, and C all make their arguments for various forms of soft peddling that aspect. They say, oh, yes, he was indeed a homosexual, but we don't want to make it too blatant, and we don't want to frighten away mainstream viewers, and, oh, we certainly don't want to offend any critics. And so you get a, a watered-down version so frequently of these, these embarrassing well, truths well, you that, wa- that then don't really make anybody happy. Well, don't you water it down. We have to go to the news. Dan Ford Prince, have a wonderful Christmas. The name of this book is Frank Sinatra, the boudoir singer. If you want to know about Frank Sinatra and Jackie Kennedy and Mia Farrow, this is the book to read. It's amazing. Thank you thanks, very much. Thanks happy so Christmas much, Dan. to all of you. Yes, happy Christmas, and we'll talk to you after the new year, okay, Dan Forth? Thank you so much. Thanks. Good Dan Forth Prince, you. you listen Bye. to the Bill Feingold Show, 94.3 K News FM.